Judicial Watch, you know, despite everyone supposedly being interested in January 6th, Judicial Watch is actually conducting an independent, thorough investigation of what went on. How did it happen? And what about the people who died? We have new documents, uh, and, and they're better than documents. They're actual audio-visual recordings of the police investigation of the death of Ashley Babbitt. The, included in the materials is a cell phone video uh, that I think is new of the Ashley Babbitt shooting. We have audios of um, the witness interviews, including that of Lieutenant Byrd, who refused to talk to investigators, as best we can tell. And plus, we have photos of Mr. Bur of Lieutenant Byrd, who was the shooter of Ashley Babbitt. Uh, they had a, there's a headshot photo, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So how did we get here? Well, Judicial Watch, you know, despite everyone supposedly being interested in January 6th, Judicial Watch is actually conducting an independent, thorough investigation of what went on. How did it happen? And what about the people who died? We sued, for instance, for the autopsy results of Officer, Officer Sicknick, who everyone, um, the big media and uh, the left lied about the circumstances of his death. And it looks like the uh, medical examiner here in D.C. sat on the truth about his death, which is it wasn't a homicide. And it was that material was only released after we sued. And we also sued about records about the shooting death of Ashley Babbitt. Here we have a police officer involved shooting of an unarmed woman, 14-year veteran, uh, who was no immediate threat to anyone, and silence, crickets. The Justice Department refused to do anything. The Capitol Police Department, who was run by uh, the politicians on the Hill, namely Nancy Pelosi, refused to do anything uh, and gave him a free pass. And in fact, his name was kept secret from the American people for months until he voluntarily came forward uh, to talk about this and try to defend uh, his decision uh, to shoot and kill Ashley Babbitt. And uh, so Judicial Watch had a lawsuit against the D.C. Police Department and the Office of Medical Examiner uh, for records. And you may recall a few weeks ago, we received records from the police investigation after months of litigation from the D.C. Police. And they include witness interviews that make it pretty clear, because uh, the officers were right near Lieutenant Byrd, that Ashley Babbitt was not armed. No one saw any arm, uh, that her, any arms in her hands. So there was no mistake, oh, I thought she had a weapon. Oh no, she didn't have a weapon. Now they did find a knife in her pocket after, after she died, uh, but that didn't have any impact on Lieutenant Byrd's decision to shoot her. She was coming through that window. You, you, you've all seen the video that's generally been out there, I'm sure and presented no imminent threat, and Bert wasn't there alone. In fact, there are police officers on the other side of the window who just could have pulled her away. Yet he shot and killed her. And as the record showed, there was no good reason. And to further confirm that, how reckless and dangerous was the decision by Lieutenant Bird to shoot and kill Ashley Babbitt, you have to remember, as I said, there were not only other citizens on the other side of the uh, the, the, the glass doors, but also uh, police officers, fellow police officers. And the new cell phone video that we have, it's heavily pixelated because the D.C. police was, what they told us, were trying to protect the identity of the police or uh, individuals um, who were involuntary to have their identities released by the government. Uh, so they, it's heavily pixelated, you'll see. And it shows, um, so imagine... This is Ashley Babbitt coming through, and Bird's back here shoots her, right? And down here are a bunch of stairs, and the stairs, the police are coming up. There's a squad, heavily armed police officers, it looks like, coming up. And they hear the shot, and they all stop. And it's pretty clear that if the bullet had gone wrong, they could have hit, Lieutenant Bird could have hit a police officer. So right here for you now is the new cell phone video showing those police officers who uh, were placed at harm's way as a result of Lieutenant Byrd's reckless decision uh, to shoot Ashley Babbitt. So here's the video. Uh, watch it through it through its entirety and you'll, and you'll see why it's important. We back you down. Hey! 
So there you have it. You see in that video why Lieutenant Byrd's decision to shoot Ashley Babbitt uh, was so reckless and dangerous because not only were there civilians there, uh, but there were other law enforcement personnel who were practically speaking right in the line of fire. Now, my view is Lieutenant Byrd's shooting was treated quite differently than other police officer involved shootings. And of course, I don't need to tell you that. You already know that. Uh, and uh, if, if it weren't a Trump supporter, uh, if it weren't January 6th, if this weren't the Capitol Hill police, which is the police agency right now run by Nancy Pelosi and her, coll and her Democratic colleagues on the Hill, I'm convinced uh, Lieutenant Byrd in the least would have faced a more serious uh, criminal investigation. And uh, also, uh, at, in the, again, in the least, an administrative sanction for recklessly shooting this unarmed individual. It was a bad shooting. And uh, this that video we have, which it took us forever and a day to get, further demonstrated. Also, we received, and it, was, it looked like it was a criminal investigation. One of the curious things, and I say this not knowing how it was resolved because the Justice Department, which, um, which we're also suing for records about their decision uh, related to the uh, prosecution of Lieutenant Byrd, or non-prosecution in his case, uh, hasn't given us the documents. But it's unclear from the documents we received whether there was a criminal prosecution recommended and rejected. So we don't know for sure whether someone wanted to prosecute him or not within the police department uh, or within the Justice Department or how that worked. Uh, but the pictures we have demonstrate that it looks, you know, it looked to me that he was being seriously investigated, at least in part. Uh, here, there's a picture of him. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, they, they got a head, straight on headshot of Lieutenant Byrd. It's not quite a mug shot, but it's pretty darn close. And then they have, which I thought was very, even more interesting, uh, pictures of his hands. So uh, I defer to the forensic experts among you. Uh, to tell us why in your comments, why that's important. And then, of course, there are pictures of the gun. Many pictures of the gun were produced to us as well. And you'll see those pictures uh, they're running through now. Uh, so, you know, this is stuff exclusively obtained by Judicial Watch. So you have all of Congress investigating January 6th. We have that, that star chamber proceeding, that, that uh, abusive investigation of Nancy Pelosi and they're talking about how terrible January 6th was, why is the Judicial Watch is releasing this information and not Congress? Or why isn't it being voluntarily disgorged in the ordinary course as would ordinarily happen if it were another police officer involved in uh, uh, shooting? It's politics, plain and simple. And some of the other photos we have include uh, photos of the crime scene generally. And, uh, they're going to run a few photos as I'm talking here. You can kind of see the doorway uh, where Babbitt uh, went through. Well, she didn't get through because they shot her. Remember, behind the, you had that crowd behind that door. And I'm sure it was scary for everyone involved. If you're on the wrong side of that door, you see a crowd and you don't know what's going to happen. But we pay these police officers to keep their heads about them and not panic and not shoot. 
And that's the most charitable way of putting it. Um, you know, prosecutors might put it a different way. And so uh, uh, you see from the photos uh, how, you know, the kind of the crazy situation there, at least with respect to that specific door area. And so we also have, uh, I don't know if they'll be up in time for this video, but we have a, a few dozen of the audio witness statements or the witness statements, audio recordings of the witness statements saying they didn't see any, uh, that Babbitt was unarmed and other information that show. Um, and, we, and you can listen to it all. You can look at the, you know, cause we have the written materials as well from our last release of materials. And now we've got the audio witness statements, which are very interesting to hear because they tr provide, this material provides dramatic firsthand information about, uh, uh, the shooting death of Ashley Babbitt. And included in these audio witness statements is the audio statement of Lieutenant Byrd, who, as best we can tell, refused to cooperate, which is his right. Uh, but here is the, uh, the two minute or so audio interview of Lieutenant Byrd uh, you'll, the voices sound weird because, and they'll, they sound weird in all of the witness statements, audio at least, is because the government somehow wanted to disguise the voices of people, even though in the case of Lieutenant Byrd, uh, he, he's identified. Uh, so here is the audio um, interview. Here's the audio of the interview of Lieutenant Byrd. Today is January 6th, 2020. It is approximately... Uh, 1938 hours. I am internal affairs division. We are located at 119 D Street, U.S. Capitol Police Headquarters. Present is the target of the criminal investigation for the officer of shooting. Sir, would you please introduce yourself? Lieutenant Michael Byrd, United States Capitol Police, House Chamber Section, Capitol Division, pin number. Thank you very much for that, sir. And if you please introduce, also present, if you would please introduce yourself. Agent MPD IED. And also present. Uh, Special Agent United States Capitol Police Criminal Investigation Section. Thank you very much. Now, um, be before we get into the uh, interview itself, I want to advise you of what's called the, the Garrity warnings. Uh, what Garrity says is that uh, you are not required to give a statement to us today. That if you choose to do so or not choose to do so, I have no bearing in your employment that any statement you give is voluntary, but also please be aware that any statement that you give will be shared with the United States Attorney's Office. Any, any statement you give will statement. be shared with the United States Attorney's Office. Okay. okay. Do, do you understand the guarantee? Anymore? I do. Okay. Uh, are you willing to give us a statement today? I would prefer to have a lawyer present. Okay. Under, those, uh, under the... Uh, in the information that you just provided. That, that is perfectly understandable. And uh, I will not ask you to provide a statement today. I will ask you, though, that when you do secure counsel, uh, you have my business card and my contact information on them. If you have them reach out to me to uh, arrange for you to provide a statement when appropriate. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, then. Well, then, uh, with that said, we're going to end the reporting at this time, unless there's anything else anyone like that. Okay. Then I'm going to end the recording at this time. It is approximately uh, 1941 hours. So you see, Lieutenant Byrd didn't want to talk. He wanted to have his lawyer, and as best we can tell, no one ever interviewed him, at least in the police department of the Metropolitan Police Department, about uh, his decision to shoot Ashley Babbitt. Of course, he talked to the media about it, but he didn't talk to law enforcement. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so this is, uh, it shows you how important Judicial Watch's work is that we're able to get this information uh, and in the face of a Congress that's focused on trying to destroy its political enemies using the pretext of January 6th. And of course, this is not our only lawsuit. As I said, if we sued the Justice Department for its information on the shooting death of Ashley Babbitt, the only person killed uh, in a, via homicide that day. And uh, we've sued the uh, Congress for the videos. They're telling the court uh, in our case against them for the videos, 14,000 hours of videos from that day. Not one second 
of the January 6th videos that Congress has can be released to Judicial Watch under the open records law. In fact, they're saying they're not even public records. And if they were, they're not important enough to release. The public interest doesn't outweigh their interest in confidentiality. Well, which is it? The worst day in American history that the public has an interest in figuring out how it happened? Or some just regular congressional day that doesn't require them to start releasing videos of what went on? You know where we stand on it. But Pelosi is the enemy, as I said before, of transparency on this. We have uh, also litigation about the government's abuse of power in terms of targeting innocent Americans, trying to get the financial transaction records of everyone here in D.C. We have that lawsuit against the FBI. We got the military using January 6th as a pretext to start monitoring the social media posts, it looks like, in an inappropriate way of our enlisted official, our, our enlisted men and women, and who knows who else. Postal Service doing the same thing, monitoring social media posts. Who knew we have a lawsuit on that? We have a lawsuit on Nancy Pelosi's conversation with General Milley about uh, in their effort to undermine President Trump in the days shortly before the inauguration, trying to undermine the chain of command Lawsuit after lawsuit. This is the real heavy lifting that's necessary on January 6th. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.